Hey, so, man, what's up, guys? Uh, great, great opportunity for us here today. For a couple of your guys here, of course, I radio, man. I am Mike Hill, the PG, the one and only. And I'm here with my guy, uh, the stretch four, Mr. Atlanta himself, downtown <laughs> Philip Brown, man. What's up, Philip? <laughs> What's up, Michael? Man, glad to be here. We got a super opportunity today. Um, we're getting to meet with the director, writer, and producer of Jump Shot. Uh, it's the story of Kenny Sailors. And we're here right now. We're being joined by uh, Jacob Hamilton. How are you doing, Jacob? Doing great. How are you guys doing today? Awesome, awesome, man. Hey, pretty good. Pretty good. Thanks for having me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Where, where are you coming from right now? So I am in Austin, Texas. Okay. Ooh, okay I've been awesome. here before. Uh, yeah. I'll Austin, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Good place. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Longhorns, man. <laughs> Longhorns. I'm not a Longhorn. I'm not. Oh. The rival school down the road, but, you know, that's all right. I'm in their territory right now. <laughs> Where did you go? I went to Texas A&M. Oh, okay. College Station. Oh, yeah, College Station. Yeah. SGC, uh, gotcha. So <laughs> are you a Manziel fan? Uh, I, you know what? I love watching him play. I can't agree with everything he's done off the field, but <laughs> – Fair. I loved it back in the day. It was awesome. Yes, sir. <laughs> uh, yeah, dope. So, yeah, man, uh, very special uh, Corsi Radio edition, our uh, interview here with Jacob Hamilton, the director of The Jump Shot. So uh, let's get right into it. Um, Jacob, when did you begin your career in film? So I kind of discovered I had a passion for film as I was wrapping up my, you know, uh, organized sports career, I guess. I played through high school, just about every sport under the sun, football, baseball, track, swam. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, as I was beginning to decide if I was gonna play in college or not, I chose not to. Uh, I came across this multimedia class uh, my senior year of high school when I had all this free times, I wasn't playing any sports and uh, fell in love with editing and started to actually edit together like highlight videos for friends of mine. And uh, throughout college, I had already been accepted in school at A&M uh, as an engineering student. I was like, well, I mean, I probably shouldn't leave because this is a, a great degree, but I really love film. Uh, I started searching for different opportunities to get to pursue that passion in my, uh, my, uh, you know, counselor at school was like, well, you should look at, you know, the athletic department. They have a film program called 12 Man Productions there that travels with the teams. They have a TV show. And so I really got to cut my teeth there. And uh, after I graduated from school, moved to Austin about 12 years ago uh, with some close friends of mine who are filmmakers. And we just kind of just buried in and grew some roots and yeah, here we are today, 12 years later, still doing it. I'm still pinching myself. Like, how is this still happening? I thought I was going to always rely on the, the degree, but yeah. um, love to do something that I'm passionate about. So we're obviously here to talk about Jump Shot, uh, the story of Kenny Sailors. Uh, how did you get involved with, with the Jump Shot? Were you researching on your own, or did you get brought in later? No, I mean, I – so I'm a cinematographer. So, like, that's primarily what I do is I – I assist other directors in helping them achieve their vision for what for their film. And so I've shot several documentaries and work, you know, short films and narratives and TV shows and whatnot, but all behind the camera. And uh, I was in 2011, I was kind of curious about directing my own uh, film for the first time. And I was like, I'll start with a short film. So let's find a, a really cool concept that we could do really well in the short form medium. And uh, I was listening to a ton of podcasts at the time, and I randomly came across uh, a two-minute interview uh, that was titled The Man Who Invented the Jump Shot, I think, uh, is what it was called. <laughs> and that's when I was introduced to Kenny Saylor's story. Like I said, it was two minutes of audio interview, and it was, you know, Kenny jumping over his brother for the first time and him being benched in the NBA. And I was just like, what well, most of you, probably when you figure it out, yeah. Somebody invented the jump shot. You're like, wait, what? That didn't always exist. Like, that wasn't a part of the game. Uh, and so when I uh, I started digging a little bit deeper into this story, I'm like, well, is this real? You know, who is this man? Is he still alive? Like, this is a long time ago. And uh, sure enough, like Kenny Sailors was like, almost he's about to turn 90 years old. 
or was 90 years old and he was living in Laramie, Wyoming, and he, yeah. you know, near the University of Wyoming where... Yeah, I played um, there, or played against... Yeah, okay, yeah, 1700 feet. Yeah, uh, probably, he's probably seen me play before, but... Yeah, <laughs> he, went all, he went to all the games. Yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, I was like, gosh, this is amazing. Um, I, I need to sit down with this guy. I mean, I need to, I need to see what's going on. And uh, one of his friends had put together a website for him, and I shot a, an email, and his friend responded, like, yeah, he's here, he does interviews, he hangs out, he'd be interested to meet up with you, and... So I, a friend of mine helped me, you know, buy a plane ticket to go up to Laramie, Wyoming. And I sat down there, and met up for breakfast and talked about this crazy idea of doing a documentary on his life. And, you know, what's funny is that he said, he's like, everybody, you know, everyone knows the jump shot in basketball. He's like, that's the only thing that people really want to talk about. But there's so sure. much more, you know, that I've accomplished in my lifetime, you know equally or if not more proud of and I like stopped him I was like well Kenny that's that's the film we need to make because yeah. basketball is going to be a part of your story no matter what but like let's just dig into who you are your character you know, like your values and, and beliefs and I think people are going to fall in love with you so yeah that kind of goes into like one of my questions that I kind of have for you in your opinion after meeting him and doing this documentary is was the jump shot Kenny Saylor's greatest achievement since he's done so much things outside of his own jump shot in terms of women's basketball, in terms of serving in the military, um, different facets of his life? You know, in your opinion, what would you say is the greatest, his greatest achievement? Um, for him personally, I would say no. Um, yeah. I think a lot of people would look at his life and, and say that, but those would probably would say the jump shot. But I don't, you know, none of those people know who he is as a person, I think. Sure. And so uh, one, of, one of the first stories I discovered when I was starting to do my research was this article. Um, I forget when it was, but somebody was, you know, uh, his, his best friend was watching, they were watching the NCAA tournament together one year. And his friend asked him, like, hey, Kenny, who's in your final four? Uh, and you know, can't, I'm sure his buddy was expecting some powerhouse school, you know, like a Duke or Kansas or Kentucky or whatever. And uh, Kenny thought about it for a while and, and he responded, God, husband, father, and U.S. Marine. That's my final four. Wow. Uh, and yeah. basketball wasn't on the list. And, uh, you know, to his friend's surprise, and I think, you know, that really does sum up and paint a picture of like, you know, the priorities in Kenny's life. I mean, he's a, he's a family man, a man of faith, served his country. Yeah. Um, and in the film, we get to explore several other things that, you know, he accomplished and be an advocate for, you know, women in sports and uh, being a guide and an outfitter in Alaska. Right. This is like, the story goes places like people would wow. never expect. So, yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. And it's crazy because nowadays, you know, we're blessed and we're lucky that we have social media and things like that to kind of get some background on some of the athletes. But, you know, for the players and athletes back then, all you just know them as were just sports players and for their uh, the sport that they play. So I think that you guys did a really uh, good, good job as far as giving his full story and just getting to the story period. Like what made you want to give this story and tell this story now, you know, because like, I think in basketball, jump shooting is such a premier thing now, you know, like kind of in the nineties and two thousands, it was about dunking mm -hmm. because of Jordan, Kobe, Vince Carter, LeBron, but now it's so much about jump shooting. So is that kind of why you kind of wanted to like really give this story? Yeah, I mean, yeah, the jump shot's the new dunk. Um, <laughs> it, it, you know, it, what's, what's crazy is, I mean, you're thinking about 2011. Um, I mean, I want to say Steph was in his second or third season then. So, like, the, I mean, the three-point shot obviously existed, but it, it, it didn't it, – the game, the jump shot wasn't what it is today. And so I can't take credit for, you know, no, yeah, for yeah. timing it. It, uh, it just worked out really well for us that – you know, wow. we're getting to feature, you know, this incredible story about this, about a man who, you know, invented what we know as the modern day jump shot today when the jump shot is the shot in basketball that everyone's talking about. 
And so um, it, it really just started because I was like, here's, here is a fascinating story about something that's significant, the origin story of something significant in a sport. But there's also this amazing character that can lead us, you know, take us on this journey. I mean, this film, if it was purely a historical look at the jump shot, like, here's how so-and-so did it. Here's, you know, yeah. this, this right. was, like, it, I, it would lose me probably in the first 10 minutes. Like, I don't I, think I'd I agree through it. Um, but because Kenny was alive, and we got to sit down with him and, and interview him and get these firsthand stories, and he's getting to demonstrate you know how he would shoot his jumper you know or dribble and do like a crossover you know and he's nine yeah. years old like <laughs> um, it makes it that much more entertaining because you're connecting with this this subject and the audience is like feeling like they're right there again to interact with them as well so yeah. um yeah, yeah there are a lot of things that worked out in our favor that just luck of the draw you know we're, we're very fortunate so uh so with that being said, who is Kenny Sailors? Like, how do you describe and wrap up this guy? Like, oh, it's so hard. You're all right. Uh, it's so hard. So I think the best way I've been able to at least describe the story to people, like, you have to think of it from the scope of, okay, so this is like Hoosiers meets Forrest Gump meets Into the Wild. Like, you take those three wow. films. <laughs> and that's kind of because Kenny lives I mean he reinvented himself like when, when people see the film like he invented, reinvented himself several times like mm -hmm. he, he lived a completely different life after basketball yeah. um, and so I mean you have you have Kenny Sailors the man you know who is a father he's a husband he's a friend you have the basketball who's a player who's a pioneer an innovator a teammate uh, and then you have Kenny Sailors, the, the guide and outfitter that's going on these crazy adventures, like well into his 80s, you know, right. climbing mountains and everything in the snow. But the mentor, the teacher, the coach, um, you know, it, it, there really is so much that, you know, speaks to who he is. And I ultimately, I think what he would probably want to be known for is just being a, a man of faith and somebody that believes in something that's bigger than himself and using the sport and using his influence to just positively impact people, no matter who or where they're from. Dope, dope. So uh, a question that, you know, most people want to know uh, with, with the film Jump Shot, uh, how were you able to connect with uh, Steph Curry and uh, what was his input into uh, getting this film done? So we were connected to Steph through one of our executive producers who – uh, she got connected to the chaplain for USA Bas for men's USA basketball. And she was able to share an early version of the film um, with, with Steph and his team, or sorry, with this, this individual. And the mm -hmm. chaplain watched it, and uh, like everyone, is, was inspired by Kenny's story. He's like, man, this is really good, and I had no idea. He's like, you know, there are a couple of guys I think should see this. He's like do you mind if I try to get the film in front of them? He's like, I don't know if they're, you know, going to watch it or if they'll do anything if they even do watch it, but uh, let's just see what happens if we put it in front of them. And so uh, one of those individuals was Stephen Curry. Um, mm -hmm. And so he sent him a, a screener of the film and I, I don't know, I forget the, the exact dates or whatever, but it was in the preseason and Steph watched it on his flight to China uh, for one of the preseason mm -hmm. games they had probably a little over two seasons, you know, two years ago, um, and watched it and loved it. And so, You're you know, we were, <laughs> yeah, I mean, like the right. fact that we were even getting the film in front of him was like, blew my mind. Um, and, uh, so he watched it and word got back to us that he really enjoyed the film. And, you know, our hope was simply that we could sit down and do an interview because right. I mean, arguably the greatest shooter of all time and this yeah. is a jump shot. like you got it it makes sense and so <laughs> yeah. he shot for the stars you know for the moon and uh he was like yeah like i'm in for an interview but how can i be more involved with the film and like that's that wasn't even on our radar you know that mm. 
he would want to actually get behind the film and, and be an executive producer and, and be a voice and champion Kenny's story. And so that's how he came, um, came on board. And I think a lot of it, you know, the obvious reasons, you know, from the basketball perspective, you know, that's why Kenny or that's why Steph, you know, wanted to get on, but it went much more beyond that, um, which I think led him to be an executive producer just because of who the man Kenny Sailors was, the man of faith, the husband, the father. I mean, I think, you know, advocate for women's sports, all these things are things that are important to Steph as well. Right, that line right. Brand, Yeah, so it was a no-brainer. It was a no-brainer. Yeah. No, uh, that's crazy how the like it kind of like starts with the inventor of the jump shot, and then it you know ends kind of culminates with the greatest jump shooter we've seen to this date, and everything in between. Like you did a really good job of capturing like kind of the evolution. It kind of went through like the fifties, the sixties, you know, up to Bird, you know, up to Ray Allen, you know, Reggie Miller, all those guys, all of his stuff. Um, yeah. I'm interested in like what is your basketball background history was you used to basketball <laughs> fan or <laughs> yeah mine uh not nearly as uh decorated as either of you my cr basketball <laughs> career <laughs> my basketball career ended uh in eighth grade when everybody caught up to me in height and uh, I wasn't ever a skilled player I was uh I was bigger and stronger than everybody so I was kind of like a, I was a great defender I, I would refer to myself as the Dennis Rodman of my uh, eighth grade team I just go in there and, <laughs> up and up and get rebounds and just makes makes them happen um but uh you know I, I appreciate sports and you know basketball is something that I'm not the like was never my best sport but I enjoy competition and I enjoy what sports have to offer um individuals that are they're that playing them you know uh what the lessons you get to learn you know of what is it like to win? What is it like to lose and still, you know, be a, a, a good, you know, a good person and respond in that way? And so for me, not having like a huge big basketball background, I knew it was important for me to get somebody on our team that does come from that. And so one of our producers, Ty Clark, um, he actually played professionally in Europe as well um, mm. for some time. He played at Azusa Pacific here and then he went over and played Europe. Um, he, uh, he's a, an amazing, amazing artist and like social guru. Like he's just incredible and all that stuff, but he loves basketball. And so when, I, he and I are just kind of getting to know each other, I brought him on to the team, uh, as a way of like, Hey, help me understand, like, what is it, you know, that I need to concentrate on? What are basketball fans, uh, really going to want to dive into? And, uh, he came on kind of more of a basketball consultant. It's just grew and grew and grew from then because, this is a combination of all of his favorite worlds coming back together again. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the story basketball that, and art. I'm yeah. saying this is a story that anybody's kind of interested in if you had any touch of basketball. And yeah. Yeah. So it connect it can connect all the pieces together for you. Um, yeah, because at one point, like if you study the history of basketball, you know that it was set shooters, you know, everything was being a set shooter. But like for I'm a huge like fan and I feel that I'm a pretty big historian of basketball. I never knew that it came from one particular guy that started the, the, the quote unquote jump shooting. So I just think that it's great that you guys got his story out there so that people can know that now, you know, I also coached uh, high school basketball at one point that we can, you know, tell the players, you know, or the young players that if you really want to know what jump shooting is about, this is where it started. And you guys have the documentary made. So I think you guys did a really good job when it comes to that. Yeah, thank you so much. And, you know, I'll, I'll say one thing. Um, you know, we, Kenny is credited for what is known as the modern-day jump shot in basketball. There were other guys that shot a jump oh, yeah. shot, a jump yeah. shot before yeah. him. Um, and uh, it was important for us to be able to include some of those pioneers. We, we couldn't fit everybody in there. And, Mm -hmm. There are still guys today, as you can imagine, I'm getting emails like on a daily basis of my <laughs> uncle, you know, whomever. Right. You know, he was the first to shoot a jump shot. I'm like, I mean, so, I, I can't find everybody. Speaking, speaking to that, how important was that that photo in the Time magazine to spread that across basically the, the nation at that time? Okay. Mm -hmm. So 
yeah, think about this. This is 1946. So this is like right after World War II. Television doesn't exist. So the only way for somebody to see a live sporting event is to go to a game. You know, sure. maybe if you go to the movies, you see like a pre-screening of like the new the big sporting event, you maybe see that. Basketball was not nearly as big as any of the other sports at the time. So like football, um, boxing, baseball were much baseball. bigger. Um, so basketball didn't get the coverage and everything was very regional because of technology. So like, you know, okay. there's that. So Kenny, who was playing in Madison Square Garden in 1946 uh, against LIU, uh, we don't know exactly, and it's actually Life Magazine, if Life Magazine like oh. knew that Kenny was going to be playing. Um, and had a photographer there that was actually a really talented, like portrait photographer, not somebody who would normally be capturing uh, a live sporting event. Um, but he obviously he got himself positioned in the best place to snap this photograph that has just become iconic uh, mm. of, the, of Kenny's jump shot and some of the earliest evidence of a modern day jump shot that we know. Yeah. Um, and so this photograph is featured in Life magazine, like big. Plastered. Actually, you're going to love this. I just found this past year. This is, this is the Life magazine uh, that, that photographs in. And I found wow. it at the antique store the other day, like a couple months ago. I'm glad you got it packaged up. Yeah, I'm glad you got it packaged up, man. That's, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got to keep that one for good. But uh, so imagine, you know, this photograph is. Uh, taken and then it goes across the nation mm. every basketball fan every kid is looking at this jump shot for the probably the first time yeah you know yeah. we sat down with several people you know several people in our film uh they're like i saw that and i went out in my backyard and i started shooting jump shots because i saw this photograph i mean it right. went everywhere <laughs> um, so it was a huge deal. I mean, he gave he gave the jump shot that's coming out party for sure. Yeah, nice he, was, he was playing at the level that he was, you know, being in New York City, Madison Square Garden, playing in the pros. You know, no no one was doing hardly anybody was jumping and shooting, but no one was doing what Kenny was doing. Wow. Yeah, he. I saw that he averaged seventeen in the NBA one year, so I was like. He was really, you know, doing doing his thing, man. So, Jacob, a question for you, man. Um, What's next? Like, what, what are you working on next? Any big projects coming up? Ooh, um, yeah, I mean, there, there's, there are always some exciting things, kind of carrots dangling in front of me, I guess, of uh, future projects we get to work on. Um, there are some that are sports related. Um, mm. And then there are some that are like completely like not sports, like, you know, something to deal with like art and another one with, uh, uh, animal conservation and whatnot. Um, so, I, I love sports, and so I'm, I'm hoping to probably always have one of those types of films, one of those types of stories kind of always in the works. Um, I wish I could dive in a little bit deeper into some of those ideas, but they haven't been solidified yet, so I probably <laughs> legally, you know, contractually shouldn't talk about them, but <laughs> I, I will hardly am, am, like, ready to, to jump into an, another feature-length documentary. Um, in the director's seat, so. Awesome, awesome. All right, well, last question. I just kind of wanted to um, touch bases on some current events, obviously with um, co the coronavirus and whatnot. Did that affect the release of the film? I see that we're doing online release. If you want to talk to anything going on related to that and, and anything with that. So, yeah, so we were set to do a theatrical release um, on April 2nd, and because mm -hmm. of... I mean, the whole world is being impacted, you know, by the coronavirus. Um, the, you know, all the theaters closed their doors as well. And so we had to very quickly come up, you know, with a, a pivot for what we're going to do for the film. And um, we, we're not like a major studio film. We're an independent documentary. We don't have an endless amount of, of money that we can toss into this to, you know, a lot of our P&A and, uh, like shift when we're gonna we can't go that far out like some of these other films because we can't relight the fire that we had already started with press and whatnot I would say up until maybe like 10 days prior to our release maybe two weeks we were still planning on 
are theatrical. And so you know, we had to, within a couple of days, like scrap everything that we had done and look at an alternate way of releasing the film in some close proximity to our ri original theatrical date. And so uh, we uh, thankfully had uh, this amazing company come along called Altabod. Mm -hmm. um, they're a, a, a direct-to-consumer digital film platform. It's brand new. Um, and it's an amazing tool, an amazing asset for filmmakers, particularly who are doing independent films, because it gives us a chance uh, to be a platform, to give us a platform to release our film. And um, we don't have to go through like your, your regular like VOD or iTunes or whatnot, where they end up taking a lot of, you know, I guess the, you, you lose so much on the, the percentage side of things um, when you work with a lot of these other uh, distributors in that way. And, and this is a very favorable split at Altavod for us. So um, it's a really exciting way for, get, for us to get to release this film. And it obviously it is unfortunate like where we are in the world today and our hearts and, you know, prayers go out to everybody that's affected by this. But the fact that there aren't any sports right now, we have a sports film, sports documentary, People are hungry to, to be entertained by, you know, be entertained and watch sports. So it, it's really a great combination for us. And we're very excited to get to release that information, but also give back uh, because we're, a portion of our proceeds are going to go uh, to help families that are affected by COVID-19. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you for your time, Jacob. I uh, appreciate it. Uh, once again, we just got done talking with, uh, Jacob Hamilton, the director of Jump Shot, uh, is coming out this weekend. Uh, I want to kick it over to Michael um, and then get some final words from you, Jacob. Yeah, um, yeah, man. Just thank you guys so much for tuning in to this very special courtside radio edition. The interview with the great uh, director of this great film that I hope you guys can all check out this documentary Jump Shot with our guy Jacob Hamilton. Uh, Jacob, do you want to drop any uh, social media tags where people can find you and uh, check out, you know, your work? Yeah, absolutely. So our social handles are Jump Shot Movie across Instagram, uh, Facebook, and Twitter. Uh, you can actually simply go to our website, jumpshotmovie.com, and that's where you can today pre-order the film. But maybe by the time when this releases, starting April 16th, you can watch the film from there. So you'll be able to rent it. Um, it's just a simple process. You sign up so that you can protect your credit card information and then you get to watch it and, and enjoy. So thanks for having me guys. This has been awesome. Been fun chatting with you. Yes, sir. No, yeah. Hey, hopefully awesome. we can, hopefully we can do it again soon, man. So, uh, we'll love it. yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jacob, for joining us. Uh, once again, Corsair Radio special edition interview, man, with our guy, Jacob Hamilton, director of the film, the Jump Shot. Mike Hill to PG, the stretch for Philip Brown, man. We thank you guys so much for tuning in. We'll catch you guys next time.